Hey everybody, uh, how's it going out there? Uh, special uh, hello to all the builders out there uh, learning on their own, building their own apps, making their own money. I uh, really appreciate you all. Um, uh, I am FullQ Developer. I share my app building process online uh, here on Twitch and on YouTube, uh, etc. Uh, and today um, we're working on Underway, which is uh, my subway app for New York City. Uh, yesterday we were working on um, our open source authentication server. Uh, but as you can see on the left, there's some new stuff that happened recently for Underway that needs some attention today uh, and cannot wait. Um, for starters, we got two five-star reviews. So I wanted to uh, tweet about them to say thank you. Uh, so we can do like a little screenshot. Maybe we'll make this um, a little bit more compact, make a nicer screen. I guess I guess that's as tight as we can make it. Then let's make a new tweet and let's drag it in. Let's say uh, thank you so much. Nagel. Do a heart emoji. You can do uh, a Statue of Liberty emoji. Oh, and it, it got a little autocorrect. I'd escape to not take the autocorrect there. Same for the other one. And I'm not sure, yeah, I'm not going to do all the little extra characters at the end there. Do the heart and the Statue of Liberty again. Cool. So thank you to these two folks. Um, I guess we can do the reply here as well. So much for your kind words and I believe emojis are not allowed on the app store but we're gonna try copy it just in case oh yes we can do because I know in, in release notes we can't do emojis we keep trying to do that Okay, we have tweeted about the new five-star reviews. We'll put that aside, and we can move on to the uh, the new map. And I guess we'll start off with uh, iOS. Put a little arrow there to say where we are. And so let's go ahead and first we download the new map. Maps, subway map in January 2023. So, yep, this is the new map. So, then we hit uh, Command S to save it. And where are we going to put this? Um,
assets MTA map and we have to name it uh, subway underscore app yes replace and we also want to grab the new night map yep also new did the same thing And let's see, let's open up Nova because I have my little readme for how to uh, take care of a new map. Uh, make this full screenish. And assets, map, the readme. Those other tabs. Okay, so we did this. Uh, copy them into the archives. Great. Keep track of all the maps. Um, oh, I guess this is a new year. New year, new folder. And then create the tiles. Okay. Uh, where is my terminal? Here it is. So CD assets, MTA map. So Swish is an open source uh, task runner that I made. Um, that what it does is it looks in your current directory for a Swish folder, and inside there it looks for a package.swift and it sees all the uh, executable targets and it exposes those as um, commands you can run. So you can see this was the tiles target and I did switch tiles and you can see it's taking the PDF and cutting up all the tiles. Um, this used to be a bash script a long time ago. I got tired of bash, uh, especially compared to Swift. Because in Swift we have types, we have uh, contemporary syntax um, <laughs> uh, a few other nice things, um, such as access to uh, yeah, core graphics. Um, FFmpeg is great. Image Magic is great. Um, as an iOS developer, using core graphics in my scripting is kind of mind blowing. Um, it's really, <laughs> uh, really nice. Well, as nice as core graphics is, there are, of course, some, well, we can fix the indentation here. There are some warts around uh, core graphics. It's not all fun and games, but it's uh, familiar and it's slightly better documented than Image Magic. For Image Magic and FFmpeg, I'm still, still doing a lot of Googling just to figure out how to do basic stuff. Um, yeah, so it's a it's a script. This used to this really did used to be an image magic script with uh, in Bash, and now it's a uh, a full on command line Swift app. Um, I have my error handling, resetting the directories, some helpers for you know getting an image out of a CG context. And you can see that the main is pretty clear as well. Like reset the artifacts directory, export it as a PNG, and then make the hike tiles. Hike, of course, is uh, a high density image format. Um, Google has a similar one named WebP. Well, it looks like it uh, finished. So let's go ahead and head over to the iOS app. CD Android Dev iOS app. Um, I don't think I need to regenerate the project, but I will anyway. I oh, need to regenerate the project to uh, bump the version number for the new release.
Yeah, building Swift packages in not the directory that you're in sometimes gets a uh, little errors like that. So Swish has a Swish dash B to totally reset a build directory and just rebuild it. Um, let's try that again, Swish project. Yay. And you can see uh, some of the commands that it ran. We're using mint to run Xcode gen to generate our Xcode project. And we can open it. Our build operations are disabled while it is resolving packages. Yeah, yesterday, um, Xcode is having a, a little bit of trouble uh, fetching Swift packages. But also Twitch was down, so maybe just something was wrong on the whole internet yesterday. I'm out. Okay, well, while we're waiting for these packages to resolve, uh, what else can we do for this new map? I guess we can search for all instances of, um, no, not over there. In here, all instances of 2022. And update them to 2023. And I believe this is a uh, generated file. Yeah, generated by, also generated by. Okay, so I guess that's, uh, that's everything for the, uh, what's it called? Copyright update. Um, Yesterday we stopped and started Xcode a few times, and that seemed to help jiggle the package resolution. Like, see, as soon as we quit it, like, it did all that work. Which is a little suspicious. There we go. Oh, these two did not come through, though. Are we allowed to build? Build failed. Missing package. Um, build failed again. How are these um, missing? Oh, these are these are my packages. What? <laughs> well, what changes do we have so far? Um, let's put what we have so far before messing around too much more. Uh, 
because uh, it looks like it's all here. Um, I guess we could try deleting derived data and trying again. Just waiting on Xcode here. Is it doing anything? Looks like it stopped, but... Yeah, it says it's green. Um, so now if I try to build it, Command R, build and run. Build failed, what's the build failure? I've seen some package products. Um, I wonder why it says these are missing. I mean, I just made a release recently for the, they released a map in late December. So that means I, I just did this recently. I don't think I changed anything to make this broken. Let's see, so missing package product foundation util. Well, it's right here. Looks like it found it. Let's see, command shift K, clean succeeded. Command R, failed. fail. Yeah, these are the correct versions. Um, am I allowed to edit this in here? Can I say, yeah, because this is a local file. And it's nice that it's allowing me to edit it. Uh, what else is it having trouble finding it saying? Can't find underway core lib. Right here. Looks like you found it, Xcode. Really does look like you found it. Yeah, let's completely quit Xcode, delete the derived data, let's uh, regenerate the project. Let's open the project, let's watch, um, well here's the derived data filling up. Okay. Like all the packages are here once again, as ex as expected. I mean, this is what we were seeing before. And then when we hit um, 
Oh, is there a problem with the signing? Yeah, but I'm not building these targets, so that doesn't matter. I'm building alpha. So now what it's doing here. Like it is compiling some stuff. Build succeeded. Okay, so what we did differently is we quit Xcode, <laughs> then deleted derived data, then reset the whole project when built again. Um, that's what makes me a senior developer, I guess. Um, Xcode uh, does that sometimes. Okay, so then we go to the bottom right of the map. We see that it does say January 2023. And we can try out the night map as well. And that also says January 2023. Looks like it's all here. Zooming works nicely in the simulator as well. Cool. So what changed? Looks like at least some of the stops I've tried have moved that much, which is nice because it's kind of annoying when they move the stations around. Uh, but we, I believe we have fixed that before on stream. Okay, so back to... Oh, I thought I had this open still. Okay. Um, Yeah, so we created the tiles, and are there any changes? Oh, we do have some changes. Um, GRDB 6.6 .6 and update copy right to 2023. 20, I guess we can check that in the simulator too while we have it up. Go to the about page. Yes, 2023. Yes, that's my company, Sincere Labs NYC. I'm available for hire for uh, making your apps. Uh, let's see, what's next? Oh yeah, um, following the README. So we, have, we can compare um, to make this 12. So I wrote a little script to, um, well, let's run it and I'll tell you what it does. So this one, uh, switch tiles, this one cut up the, cut up the PDFs into tiles. This compare script, uh, it exports the PDFs as kind of smaller PNGs that are small enough so that they'll fit inside an image differ in memory because if you do the, the map at the actual size that we rendered out to in the app it's just way too big so we have kaleidoscope not sure why it wants to send me notifications um let's see open in finder Yeah, we can delete this old one here. Yeah, so now in, let's go to this view. Not a pistachio says, can't hear anything you say. The police sirens is loud as fuck. Yes, that's true. Welcome to uh, New York City. Um, hopefully as they go into the distance, it uh, <laughs> gets a little better. Um, they want to let you know, very importantly, that they have sirens. Uh, they need to tell everyone. 
So yes, yeah, so we have the this map, and then we have the current one as a PNG. Oh, here it is. So this one and this one, we want to compare. And if we zoom in, we can see that the diff, there's this, uh, and they changed the date, the job, and they changed something up here, the square. Let's see, maybe I can swap it. Oh, they took this thing out. Okay. But basically, no change at all. They just updated the date and took out this big square. Okay. Well, that's good for me, I guess. <laughs> um, let's see if they change anything on the night map. So, night map and this one open with Lidoscope. Uh, looks like it's the same thing. No changes. They just took out that big square. Yeah. Okay. Easy map update today. Uh, how's the audio now? Um, not a pistachio. Hopefully it's a little bit better. Uh, let's see. So, what else do we need to do? We need to uh, do a version bump. Two thumbs up. Thank you. So we have our build version uh, in a file, and then I use scripts to generate everything else for it. So, build version. Um, the new year, should we do 3 auto or 29? Uh, not going to think about it too hard. <laughs> um, and then in App Store Connect, we can make a new version 2.29.0. We can generate the project, and we'll see that the project version has uh, updated. It uh, updates all the info plus. Two point. Um, yeah, I don't want to push this to the app store right now because there's some other stuff I wanted to get to today that maybe we can put into this release. Um, but I guess we can confirm that Android is ready to go. Uh, Android Studio sometimes messes up the stream a little bit, so bear with me a little bit as we load it up. Okay. Uh, now, how does the map get generated for um, the Android app? All right, it has its own little script to do it. Okay. Waiting for the emulator to come up. Oh, 
Cool, and it has the January map, perfect. And tapping on the stops, I mean, we know the stops didn't move at all. There's nothing to do there. And there we go for our Android, it's working as well. Uh, so we also need to do the version bump here. Uh, so that is, how is that in? I think it's in one of the Gradle scripts. Is it this one? Not this one. This one? Yes, this one. And then we can uh, generate signed bundle. Next. Oh, this isn't all set up. Okay, I guess I'll do this uh, off the stream. <laughs> um, but we can commit that. Uh, uh, 1.8.2. So confirm that the new map is working in iOS, the new map is working in Android. Uh, there's not really any changes to the map that the MTA published. It's just the, uh, they removed, had a big alert box. Ah! It had a big alert box um, right here that they removed from the map. Cool. So those will go out uh, hopefully later tonight or, you know, really soon to the relevant app stores. Uh, cool. So um, we also had a new uh, mention on Twitter this morning. And we can show you what it was. Where's the thread? I guess this is the start of the thread. Uh, Airline Flyer is a transit podcaster, and he's been tweeting about our app every once in a while, and we're so grateful to him for the uh, attention. <laughs> um, so he says, hi there to the New York City Transit subway. I see and know I see thanks to Underway NYC and nowhere on the MTA site. But the escalators at the Calp Ave BQR are going to be replaced starting later this month. Will the north entrance remain open during construction? The MTA responds, Hi, Jason. We'll check into this. Can you share a link on where you read this? I can't link to it, but it's in the Underway app that pulls from MTA APIs. There's some incorrect data. There's no Lafayette Street exit, and the M doesn't go to the call, but I assume that's MPA, MTA API data quality issues. I assume that's MTA API data quality issues. Uh, thanks, says the MTA. We'll get back to you when we know. Thanks. And then the MTA responds, the street entrances will remain open during this escalator work. Thanks. And then Derek Richard posts where he found it on the website. Uh, so there's a few things here. Um, let's bring the iOS app back open. Uh, so he's at DeKalb, is the stop he's talking about, which is over here. And it has two escalator alerts, so you can click on that. And I guess he's in dark mode. Um, let's see, maybe we'll put it side by side like this. And maybe minimize everything else. Okay. So a few things here. I can't link to it. Yes, so there's no share button here. So that's that's uh, item number one. Um, let's see, for service statuses, like for 
these delays, you can share this. There's a little share button. Um, I obviously don't have messages set up on my simulator. Uh, how do you do this? Go to like reminders. Yeah, so that shows the copy and then copy paste work across um, in the simulator. No, it doesn't. Uh, it used to, let's see, so I can set that up. I don't want to type that in. Automatically sync paste for it. Looks like it is, uh, looks like it is set to be synced. Copy. Okay, well, I'll just click open link. You can see it opens, um, uh, thanks, iOS. You can see that it opens on the website. You can share a link. Um, do a service status. Uh, close that again. Go back to our app. Uh, you can share a link to a train. So let's say if this R train. Whoa, this is a. Uh... Wow, what's going on with our. So this is. <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, J Street is in Brooklyn. So I guess the algorithm is correct in in putting these dividers here, but this train is all out of all out of whack. This train is not. So it sounds like that's a <laughs> like that's an MTA problem. This train is not. Okay, well, anyway, I was trying to show that you can share a. And share a link from a from a train, but we don't have a share a link from the from this screen or this screen. Uh, so I'm gonna see if we can do that. That's the first item here, and then investigate those routes affected. Um, there's some incorrect data. Jason says there's no Lafayette Street exit. So I want to double check that as well. Um, and then that was super weird that our, See, this one's fine. This train is all kinds of messed up. Oh, this happens sometimes when there's a train that has a, there's two trains with the same ID. That's what's happening. <sighs> yeah, that happens every once in a while that the MTA reuses an ID. And uh, that's... That's unfortunate. Uh, I think at some point I need to make my own IDs for trains instead of relying on the MTA because they do stuff like that. It's the it's two trains with the same ID, and uh, where was it? I think it was this train. Yeah, so Whitehall Street is at the bottom of Manhattan. Uh, not if Sasha says defeats the piece of purpose of using IDs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's uh, that's how I feel about it. It's a little bit of a why why are you like this moment, MTA? Um, you can see that all the other trains are fine. It's just just this one at the moment, or these two at the moment, have the same ID.
Okay, so that's not something that we're going to fix uh, today at any rate. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I guess we can check this route's affected. Because, yeah, there is no uh, M train here. I wonder where that's coming from. So let's put a breakpoint uh, on that screen. Uh, I think it's E and E status. Well, let's look at us over to the right folder, and then we can take it from there. Okay, so we have an equipment ID, so we, we can have links directly to um, we can we can have a share button here. Okay. Uh, so let's see, what are the steps here? So iOS uh, share button. And on the back end, uh, goes uh, the data. And I'm really eager to look at the share button, and I'm really eager to investigate what's going on with the um, bad data. Like, is it on my end or the MTA's end? Because um, I guess I don't want to build on top of a shaky foundation. I want to make sure that my current foundation is, is solid before uh, adding on to it, um, as exciting as to just uh, drop a little button there. Okay, so investigate uh, routes affected. So let's... How do I want to do that? Um, I guess I can see what's in my... what's in my database. So the app ships with a SQLite database um, with all the stations in it, and I think all of the uh, escalators in it as well. And that's in the data folder. So this might need to be updated. Is there a readme here? I don't have a readme. Yeah, currently I call it the master data file. It really needs an update, um, but it is kind of unique. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here's the uh, E and E stands for escalators in elevators. This might need an update. Yeah, looks like it's uh, loading something from somewhere, uh, but from where? Let's look at the, the Amy equipment is the, so there's a, there's a table. Uh, let's, let's open it up so we can, I can show it to you. Let's see, the SQLite viewer I like is called table plus. And we have an update, sure. So here's the current e, &E equipments. Call and relaunch, sure. Oh, we want an administrator's name. Yeah, so you have a short description. What else is up here? The long description. The routes that go there. Uh, so the name that, of the elevator that Jason was tooting about is ES-308. Uh, these look like the, these are all 
elevators. Oh, because it's just the first 300. Okay, so I think we can filter ID equals ES308. Uh, oh, is this uh, sensitive? There we go. So in my database, I have the M here. So this, maybe I need to update this from the MTA or the MTA where I got this from uh, is a little messed up. Okay, so that's, <laughs> yeah, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from uh, the database in the app, which might need to be updated or the MTA needs to update their stuff. And then we can update it as well. Um, heading back over to how I generate that SQLite database. So the ENI equipment schema that we were just looking at, that table and here at this table, ENI equipments, this is coming from this ENE type here. And is here okay so where are you getting your stuff from the data inbox so i guess that's something in there's the inbox any equipments.json sure convert so let's search for uh, es308 Yeah, and you can see that the M <laughs> is right here. However, I don't see it mentioning Lafayette. Take a look at his... Yeah, this one says Anne Lafayette Street. Oh, here it is. Oh my god, it's right in front of my face. Yeah, so maybe this file needs to be updated. Um, do I have a readme for where to get that from? Oh, I have a little script to grab it. Okay. I can run an update on that file. So let's go to the terminal. Let's go to the data folder in the inbox there. And we just want to write it to the file here. That's so going to build that script, which of course is in Swift, because I do love my Swift scripting. And I guess that package that it's building is doing like basically all the back end work for the app. So it's uh it's big. Let's <laughs> a key for the MTA's feeds. MTA key environment variable. That one's protected by the MTA key. Um, okay. So I guess I need to, uh, how can I grab that without showing it on screen? Uh, 
Let's see, I guess I can hide my screen real quick. And uh, yeah, there we go. Now we can that uh, key. MTA key. And then I guess I can try running it one more time. Just to make sure that at least that part worked. Cool. We'll bring the screen back. And let's see, so there were some edits here. Uh, I'm looking for, I'm looking for my Git client to see what the changes are. It's, it's a large shift. Do you want to show it? Yes, please. Okay, wow. Um, everything changed? Oh boy, does this mean they changed the format? Okay, well, let's try generating the uh, a database and see how far we get. Uh, let's see. Oh, this has not been run in a while. Okay. Okay, so it's referencing a local package that I, looks like I moved or something. Uh, let's see. Looking for Android data, flavors. Oh, I see. I uh, I renamed it. Yeah, um, Swift has this kind of annoying thing where the name of the directory is like very important, like more important than the actual name of the package. And I find that um, kind of annoying, <laughs> uh, but it's forced some uh, some strange naming schemes. So let's run that again. Cool. Um, oh, you know what I should have done? I guess I can still do it. I can look for that. Uh, yeah, it still says Lafayette Avenue, uh, but it does take the M off of here. So <laughs> I guess uh, according to Jason, at least this part is still incorrect. It looks like they did fix uh, this one. I love how they say line served by elevator, and this is an escalator. Okay, so let's, uh, I guess let's run the app again. Oh, and I guess we should put the arrow here. This is where we're at. We're investigating the, make sure our data is as good as it says.
Hello, hello, hello. Okay, I guess we can switch to this other mic for a little bit. Um, thanks for telling me about that. Yeah, when I was running that build, I could hear the music like crackling, <laughs> which I guess meant that uh, there was some problem with the with the audio, and I can't get my external mic to reconnect. Um, Okay, so where were we? We were, yes, we investigated that we have better data now. And maybe now we can do an iOS share button. Yeah, so in the ENE detail, um, uh, not a pistachio says i used to get crackling noises from having the previews open in xcode ah yes those were good memories <laughs> yeah we can try quitting the simulator um doo -doo 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 -doo. Hello, hello. But I guess the backup mic is working. Um, hopefully it doesn't sound too bad. Right, so my current goal is, oh, I need the simulator. I need the simulator. this doesn't have any problems a okay, Times Square always has uh, something out yeah so I'm gonna put a share button right there not a pistachio asks so the part you investigated is just static strings that requires an app update yes Yeah, that was the decision I made was that in order to keep the feed small, we're going to have kind of the static data about the elevators and stuff in the app. And uh, yeah, there's still, <laughs> there's still wrong stuff in there uh, from the MTA. Um, But it's, I guess they did make some updates in there. Okay, so this is up for repair. So this needs a share button. Um, and that's going to be, so this is the, I'm using a, a Viper architecture for each screen here. Let's see, here's the view controller. Um, and where's the toolbar come from? Is the toolbar in the wireframe? Uh, it's in, let's see. Oh, here's it is. Here's the toolbar. We can add a share share button there, and that'll send a message to the presenter. That the presenter needs to also implement. I got really excited about um, protocols. Um, and with SwiftUI, this is like kind of a moot point, but this app predates SwiftUI by quite a while. So so we can add that conformance there, which means we will need a New method here, but I'm gonna let the compiler help me with that. Thank you. Oh, Bart did tap share. Yep. And then let's look at another uh, share. Oh, 
Alt did tap action. What does this do? It's just it's almost a router to share. Perfect. Exactly what I was expecting. So we have to expose the share method on the router. Um, close tabs. I'm going to look at the trip router to remember how to do that. I see, it just exposes it. And as you can see, this uh, is a subclass of app router, which has some basic functions on it, such as share. And this protocol um, exposes that uh, to the presenter. So I think that might be all we need to do to get that share button to work. Okay, that didn't show up actually. Where is it? <laughs> Is it? See, if I take everything out, am I just like on the wrong file or something? This looks correct. Uh, but you never know. And let's let's check. That had no no effect at all in here. Okay. Uh, what's the deal with that? Oh, oh, right, because it's this is the screen. This is like for the entire station. Okay, so but yes, I was looking at the wrong screen in the simulator, but it was the right screen in code. Okay, build again now that we now that I'm up to date. Times square. There we go. Sure. And actually rate it in the uh, app store, I guess, in the simulator, I guess. So I don't think this is going to copy paste out. Yeah, it did not. Maybe you can make a reminder for it. And then we can head to our reminders in the simulator. OK, yeah, so this uh, actual page on the server is not found. But this is what the URL would look like. We can set, but on from the iOS side, this is finished. Now we just need to create this page on the back end. Just, just need to create this page on the back end. Okay, so this is oh what's with this um what's with this indentation? Let's see, control I. I guess we can control I the whole page. Control I, of course, is Xcode's auto indent, uh, which is not the best auto indent I've ever used, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> um, let's see. File. 
S will say uh, share button on escalator and elevator uh, detail screen. Cool. How much time do I have left? It's five o'clock at NYC. I have a meeting at six. I need to prepare for it. Um, well, let's at least take a look at the back end stuff. Um, wait, why are these changes still here? We just committed. Okay, whatever. Okay, so that was the data folder. We were in the iOS app. Now we do have a web app over here in Vapor, so we can take a look at this. Uh, so let's um, CD over there. Uh, web app. There should be a package.swift in here. Yes, there is. Okay, so then we can open that up with Xcode. And again, Xcode's been having, taking its time loading the Swift packages. Well, looks like that's not too slow today. Let's start, let's hit Command B to get that building in the background. Build failed, okay, that's great. Oh, why is it trying to run it on my phone? Okay, so <laughs> let's try this again. Let's need to minimize that. Uh, sources, web app, app root. Yeah, so app root is a type in my core library that's shared across uh, front end and back end for every kind of entity in the app. And this is how I do the deep links. Um, you can see it's in underway core lib. So I can link, I can deep link directly to a train or someplace on the map or to a station. Um, and so people can set up their own shortcuts uh, if they're only interested in one station. These are vended as user activities. So I believe you can use the shortcuts app to set up a shortcut to load just the stations they're looking at. And I think I wrote a guide for that on our blog a long time ago. Uh, yeah, so that's app route. And so on the back end, um, oh, thank you so much for the follow, Obi Van Kenobi. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your new year. Yeah, so typically in Vapor, you kind of have your routes kind of listed out. Um, I guess uh, yesterday when we were working on the authentication server, we had like a more traditional uh, set of routes. Um, but because I have my own type for routing in iOS and in the web and all that, um, I kind of <laughs> kind of did my own little thing here. Um, Let's see if I can explain it. So this is a typical uh, Vapor router. Uh, well, let's start from the top, I guess. 
So obviously we have a healthy route just to say if the server is up or not. Um, and then for all cases, for all app route cases, you make a handler. <laughs> And then in here, if we have, we are we're only handling trains and service arts right now, and everything else we just render uh, not yet implemented. Um, so we would also want to add a case for any equipment. You can look at the subroute there. Any once again is escalators in elevators uh, in the MTA's parlance. And then what is an any equipment group have on it? So it looks like this is just a structure. Um, let's click into it to confirm. Yeah, it's just a structure with the ID. Perfect. So here we'd want to kind of copy what we're doing here for the service alert details. Uh, we would want to turn request dot um, ene equipment with the ID and then we need to define this method so let's make a new file for it like we're doing for the other ones uh, Xcode will helpfully hide it and e equipment And we can do a little bit of the copy paste. And yeah, let's copy in the imports as well. Then we can keep on going. Let's see, we need to get ready for this meeting at six. Uh, let's see, let's just do a little bit more to get this to compile. Um, Not implemented, I guess. Oh, I need the return at the beginning. Cool, and that'll be something that we want to uh, pick up soon. Um, so we need to push the Android app to the App Store, push the iOS app to the App Store, and while that's in review, that might be enough time to finish this piece, and we'll have something um, ready to go for people to share this kind of thing. Uh, so you can say this was uh, stub out any equipment uh, page in web app.
yeah, I think that's going to be uh, all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm building what my heart tells me to build. Build your own apps, make your own money, live your own dreams. Your employer does not have your best interests in mind. And also, uh, I'm open for contract work. Please hire me if you need help with iOS, um, Android, or Swift on the server. I also offer coaching and mentoring. Oh, welcome back, Bruce Leaf. Hope you're having a wonderful start to your new year. Leaning in right at the end here. Um, and I plan to be back uh, hopefully tomorrow. Um, getting a great start to the year with a bunch of streams. Thank you all for the follows today. Um, thank you for the support. I love sharing this with you. Uh, if you want to stay in touch, my Discord is, if you say exclamation point Discord, you can join in there. Uh, Bruce Leaf says to you tomorrow, Happy New Year, and to you too. Good morning, evening, or night, wherever you are.